Hello friends, Lee Brown here with One Community Real Estate and the 2021 Vice President of Advocacy for the National Association of Realtors. And yes, I have to announce that to make all the regulatory people happy. But the reason I'm surprising you with a live feed this afternoon, I know you're so excited to see that I'm live for no reason on a Monday, is that first of all, this is a live episode of my new podcast, Real Estate from the Rooftops, which is brand new. So you should go find it on all of your podcast sources, subscribe and totally give it five stars just because you love me. But this episode, we're going to talk about the latest and greatest news we just got on the new stimulus package. That is the new relief measure. Finally, the deal has been struck between our congressional leaders. So if you're ready, here come the bullet points for what's coming down the pike. A new round of direct stimulus payments of $600 to most Americans, including dependents. That's going to help a lot of folks, especially in hospitality or hourly workers. A lot of people who have been on a razor's edge right now. So it's not enough for a lot of people, but it's a start. We're also going to see an extension of unemployment assistance, which includes that PUA boost of $300 a week through March 14th. The unemployment assistance going through April 19th, the $300 boost through March 14th. Don't ask me how they come up with this stuff in DC because, you know, they're kind of in their own little world up there. Um, hey, Jamie. Hey, James. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Oh, look at all the Bills and the Jameses. How about that? We need some other names to show up in here. So here is another exciting piece of news, especially if you are a member of the National Association of Realtors and you wonder, what are they doing with political advocacy? Well, those who wear this pin are the ones who should tell you that those unemployment benefits have once again been extended to the self-employed. Y'all, this is giant, huge news and didn't exist if realtors weren't up there at bat. And just pay attention to something here. When realtors are working for self-employed people, we're not just looking out for realtors. We look out for everybody who's self-employed. If you're a 1099 insurance contractor, hairdresser, nail tech, granite person, landscaper, house cleaner, we've got your back too. So I've never been prouder to be a realtor than the work that we do on behalf of everybody in our communities. And so if you wonder why I'm looking up and down, I'm trying to read this. I normally have better manners than that with my camera, but cut me some slack. Okay, so here we go. Your Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, they've put an additional $284 billion in it. And there's an additional $20 billion in the EIDL grants. That's the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, which means that some eligible businesses will get a second PPP loan to help you get through. And there's a simplified forgiveness process for most PPP borrowers. If you are somebody who's taken out a PPP loan and you have questions, stay tuned. There will be an announcement coming shortly. I'm bringing back my expert on PPP, Eric Kistner, with all the insights and scoops. He's completing his research now. So before you finish that paperwork, we're going to bring you some more information to help you do it right. And this is what you were hearing about over the weekend. If you're a political news junkie, some of y'all are not. That's what you have Lee Brown for. Woo! Because I love being a junkie in this stuff. We are going to see deductibility of business expenses paid for with PPP funds. Do y'all get what a big deal that is? That's a giant, huge, big deal. And I'm very grateful to the members of the delegation who decided to stomp their feet and pitch a fit about that because it was kind of aggravating to find out that some of the, I'm trying to be nice about it, some of our elected officials and bureaucrats in DC wanted to tax your PPP dollars. You talk about stupid on top of stupid, but luckily that's been addressed. So yay to Shannon McGann and our lobbying team for working with the members of the delegation who were willing to fight for that. There's $25 billion being provided to the states through September 30th of 2022 for rental assistance. And ready? This is so big. This allows landlords to apply for funds on behalf of tenants. Now understand something going on right here. And I'm going to pop over to the actual information from the Committee on Financial Services under Chairwoman Maxine Waters to tell y'all this, because this is a giant sticking point 
And something that regular people might not know, if you listen to some of the groups out there who talk about tenants who need assistance, they want to cancel rent. They want people to live for free. I saw another article in the paper this weekend saying, well, there are empty buildings in Charlotte. Can't you just let people live in there? No, you cannot because that is called private property and just stop it with your Soviet pipe dreams. That's crazy talk. But we don't want to hurt tenants who have been out of work and need help. There are good people out there at risk. But get this, this is how it works. You have a tenant who's not paying. Well, if they live in an investment property owned by an investor, most investment real estate, most rental properties are not owned by hedge funds and Wall Street friends. They are owned by you and me and other mom and pop investors to the tune of somewhere around 80% of our rental units in the country are owned by regular normal neighbors who may have chosen to buy rental real estate instead of playing the stock market because maybe they like providing a roof over their neighbor's heads. Well, if the tenant doesn't pay, the investor has no money coming in. Now, investors are required by law to provide heat. Y'all, it's been cold in North Carolina this week. Some of you are up north. Y'all got covered up in snow. We have to provide safe housing. And so we're supposed to take care of our tenants. And we have property taxes and utilities and HOAs and maintenance and everything adds up. So if the tenant's not paying, the investor doesn't have money. And so people say, well, then just forgive what mortgages they have. Well, if you don't have the investors paying the mortgage on the rental property that they own, the banks don't have money. And you might think, well, banks don't need money, Lee Brown. Yes, they do, y'all. That is called a supply chain. If you want the banks to lend money to people to buy properties and buy businesses and go out and do great things, they have to have money to lend. Money does not grow on trees. I don't know if y'all were maybe not educated on that as children, but money is a finite object and frankly it is a tool that was created for the exchange of goods and services. And so anyway, long story short, we have a lot of tenants who are not paying. Not all of them are above board, but some of them are. So let's just talk about how we fix this. Well, the big news is this. The tenant, let me go back to my paperwork here from the House on Financial Services so I can read it to y'all directly. This says, renters apply for assistance with the entities that states and locals select to administer the program. Once a renter qualifies for assistance, drum roll, doo -doo 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 -doo, the administering entity sends the payment directly to the landlord. That's huge, y'all. That means that our renters who haven't been educated properly on good financial management won't get the rental assistance and then spend it on the new iPhone. The rent will pay the rent so they can keep a roof over their heads. This is a big deal. It also says landlords can apply directly for rental assistance under the program, but will be required to notify the tenant that assistance is being provided on their behalf and obtain the tenant's consent. This is fantastic news. We have been needing this because, again, you want to protect all parts of the supply chain when we're trying to keep people in housing so they can have a safe place to live. Kids can have a place to go to school. So we get the schools reopened. And speaking of that, in this stimulus package, there's new money for schools and vaccine distribution. Do not at me with your fights about what you think about the vaccine, good and bad. All we'll say is that if we need the vaccines to get the schools open and people consent and say yes, then that's going to be provided. Now, you also have information here that there is something else I'm so excited about. Ah, this is so good for all of us. There is $7 billion to the states for broadband expansion, including $300 million for rural broadband. Do y'all know what that means? That means that some of our counties in, in North Carolina, we don't have everywhere that's like Charlotte and Cabarrus County, where I am, where it is built up and we all have multiple options for internet. You have rural counties where you have agriculture, you have places where towns used to be thriving and now they are not so thriving. When broadband comes there, you have created new opportunities. And for those of y'all that are concerned about housing affordability issues, we all know that in a smaller rural market, far away from the big cities and the suburbs, if you had broadband, people who can work from home might be able to move somewhere more affordable and thus have their own home for the first time. So I am super excited about the expansion of broadband because that's the kind of infrastructure that is really good. 
And let's see, what else did we have? Oh, with the tenant assistance and landlord assistance, this does include payments for rent and arrears plus utilities and other expenses in arrears as well. Now, this consideration is happening right now alongside a $1.4 trillion spending bill to fund the government through September 21. Can we please just discuss that our government needs to learn how to not spend as well as to spend, but different discussion. Y'all need to elect better people. Anyway, the government funding bill includes a couple more options. We are looking at the extension of a group of tax breaks. Those are called tax extenders. And so when tax things are passed, y'all, they have deadlines on them. And so if you want to keep the tax breaks, you have to have extenders. And there's some that are coming along that some will be permanent and some will just be multiple years. We'll see an increase in fair housing funding, a two-year expansion of the business meals deduction, which we know how important that is, extension and expansion of the employee retention tax credit, permanent extension of Section 179D, that's a deduction for energy efficient commercial buildings, Shout out to my commercial real estate brethren. Y'all need some help there. Make sure you tell your clients about that. That's a wonderful thing. Mortgage debt forgiveness exclusion extended for five years. And for my friends in housing finance, hey, I hope y'all are paying attention. Hey, Will Perry Hill, did you see this already? The low income housing tax credit is expanded and improved. I got to tell y'all something about the low income housing tax credit. We talk all the time about wanting to make sure that our low income neighbors have somewhere to live, but then some of y'all think section eight is nasty and horrible and you don't want government housing. The low income housing tax credits are amazing. They're public private partnerships. And that means you can have a wonderful private developer who has a heart for low income housing and they want to build it. But y'all, the cost of labor and goods is very, very high right now. And so when you have high cost of labor and goods and materials, you can't build affordable housing unless you have tax credits. And so some of our elected officials do not understand that tax credits are not bills being passed back and forth. It is a way to utilize the government's tax authority to provide opportunity for private developers to make amazing things happen. So low income housing tax credits allow us to work as a state agency at North Carolina Housing Finance or any of the other state agencies to create opportunities in communities for our neighbors, disabled vets, senior citizens who need somewhere to live and don't have expanded budgets. And so exciting stuff, the low income housing tax credit, I'll give a shout to the North Carolina congressional delegation and specific Ted Budd for making sure that stuff goes through. Ted, you're an amazing leader on that. So anyway, y'all, big, big news here. Very exciting stuff. Please spread the word to any of your local small businesses who maybe did PPP. Spread the word to your friends and neighbors who have been out of work that there is a little bit of help coming. We're grateful for everything. But just remember something, friends, when we think about what real estate should look like, it's more than signs in yards. It is more than what happens in our multiple listing service. It's everything that we do to benefit our communities. And realtors are out there doing more than you people ever realized. If you're a realtor watching this, please spread the word in your community so that the powers that be will know that HGTV is just scratching the surface. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful Christmas on Friday. I know y'all enjoyed your Hanukkah that finished up last week. Take care of each other. Extend a little grace. And if you're thinking about typing in all caps and using exclamation points all up in a row, backspace before you do that, call somebody and let's fix things together. Bye.